All right then, gamers. Let's do it. It's finally arrived. The studio update, Guild Wars 2 2023. It's absolutely colossal. We're talking fractals. We're talking strike missions. We're talking about living world getting reworked into something else. We're talking about expansions coming a lot sooner. We've got balance patches. We've got the Super Adventure Festival. We've got map queues in PvE. We've got world versus world active participation reward thing happening. In fact, that's tomorrow. Even sooner than we could possibly imagine. Okay? We've got new open world maps. We've got new story arcs. we got it all. This, this post is colossal. It's got everything in it. This is ridiculous. It's out of control. We've got this cool screenshot. We've got Sue One of the Jones. We've got Dardex 11. We've got Chromium Embedded Framework updates. This actually is... The roadmap that, in my opinion, we've all been waiting for. Okay, well, uh, you know, I'll let you know. Let me know what you guys think of it after we've gone through this. But I've got to say, I am really excited about this. This has actually very much exceeded my expectations. You know, I was actually a little bit worried. I admit it. I was genuinely a little bit on the worried side actually for this. I was like, oh, it's not gonna live up to this. It's not gonna. Ugh. Everyone's really hyped, uh, and you know, maybe it's not gonna be good enough. But actually, uh, I think that if Arena are actually able to deliver on what they have actually said here, this is going to be a bit of a new era for Guild Wars 2. This is going to be delivering more content across multiple game modes that will be well maintained with consistent updates across the board, and more content I think we're used to by a significant margin, uh, and of course, a little bit more, a little bit more varied content, and also a bit more accessible across the board with the new strike missions and all that kind of good stuff. And yes, guys, you heard me correctly. A new fractal. A bit of a commitment to fractals, in, in fact, which is very, very exciting. So, let's get into it. Let's do a full read-through of this post so that, you know, you don't have to. I'll read it for you guys. You can just listen to me read it. I like that. That's good. If only someone would do that for me, that would be great, too. Uh, <laughs> maybe next time. Hello, Guild Wars 2 community. Before our holiday break, we wrapped up 2022 by reflecting on what a fantastic year it was for Guild Wars 2. In the time between that studio update and New Year's Day, Guild Wars 2 and the ArenaNet team earned several end-of-year awards from top gaming press, including PC Gamer Best Ongoing Game, MMORPG Best Player's Choice MMO of the Year, Massively OP's Best MMO Studio two years in a row, oh, the victory lap, Best MMO Expansion, and Best MMO Business Model. Wow. Guys. Guild Wars 2 with the critical acclaim. Oh my god. A heartfelt thank you to our fantastic community for helping us make last year the success it was. Let's do that again. We closed the December studio update with a promise that we'd be back in early 2023 to talk about our long-term plans for Guild Wars 2. Today, we'll be talking about some big changes we're making to how we develop and deliver new content and features, including our approach to expansions, and we'll share our next development roadmap. This blog post is absolutely jam-packed with information, so let's dig in. Defining the problem, since 2021, we've put a renewed emphasis on developing Guild Wars 2 with a player-centric approach, where step one in our development process is to seek out and understand the problems and frustrations that MMO players face. It's kind of like a classic Guild Wars, a Guild Wars thing in general, right? Like, Guild Wars 1 has always been the MMO that tries to remove the annoying things, right, uh, from the game, and Guild Wars 2 definitely followed in that, uh, in Guild Wars 1's footsteps in that regard. This approach was first of all, oh, they, they just said that. Look at that. It's, I, you know, I don't even need to read this. I already know. The conclusion of the Elder Dragon Saga, a story told over the course of a decade, was an opportunity for our team to reflect on our past before moving forwards. We evaluated what has and hasn't worked over the years and used those insights to redefine how we develop and release content for our players. Our goal for the next phase of Guild Wars 2 are simple. We want to deliver content updates in a more timely and more consistent manner, and we want to provide better support for the wide variety of systems and game modes that make up the Guild Wars 2 experience. Sounds very good. That's what I like to hear. This has been the thing. Look, this has been the thing that Guild Wars 2 has always struggled with, is consistently updating game modes. It's like, oh yeah, only story, only raids, never a fractal. What's world versus world? Cornerstone game mode. This has always been their problem. They have, look, they have defined the problem. Well done. <laughs> Good job. Having the development bandwidth needed to iterate on core systems is especially important to us. And it's something we've been making headway on over the last year with our quality of life improvement initiative. And this is very true. I've actually been very impressed with the consistent quality of life improvements. I really hope we see a lot more of this. Please give me character specific settings and keybinds. Please give me game mode specific keybinds so I don't have to change character model limit whenever I change to a different game mode. Hook me up, ArenaNet, do it. 
There are so many systems in Guild Wars 2 that have good bones. And they can be even better with just a bit of love. That scares me, guys. Do you know why? Because that implies there's a skeleton inside Guild Wars 2. In the same way that right now there is a skeleton inside all of you. Be careful not to get spooked. The path forward. The first step towards accomplishing these goals was to rebalance how we allocate our development resources across the project. Historically, with a few exceptions, and here we go, here it is, Living World seasons have required the focus of nearly the entire Guild Wars 2 development team to deliver at the size, quality, and cadence that our players expect. It's made it difficult to simultaneously develop expansions while supporting the game with regular content updates. It also meant that many areas of the game went undersupported. Yes. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, that's just true, right? In the next phase of Guild Wars 2's development, we're taking a more balanced approach that will allow us to provide more support for popular game modes, make frequent quality of life improvements to core gameplay systems like professions, deliver new features, and expand the world of tier with satisfying, immersive story updates. To me, they're speaking my language here. This is what I love to hear. This sounds like we're not just going to say, oh yeah, all that stuff, we're going to ignore it. Uh, that didn't happen. We'll just make something new, right? Ditch that system, move on to the next. Ditch that one. Oh, how about another system? Yeah, this has been something that has been endlessly frustrating in Guild Wars 2. And it seems like they get it. Uh, the, the leadership team at Anet, they get it. They're actually going to fix the game. Hallelujah. It's happening. Yes. I mean, they kind of already started doing this. This has been mentioned in the article, of course. And we've... And I think they've already made statements alluding to this as well, that they want to actually improve some of these core systems and actually fix them. Looking at dungeons, looking at currencies, looking at fractals, looking at raids, right? All this kind of stuff, like reworking open world bosses, uh, you know, changing the graphics options, changing the defaults there, right? All that kind of stuff. Looking at the new player experience, blah, blah, blah. Like, they've been doing this for a while now, and I think it's actually been very positive, right? Overall, there have been some genuinely really big improvements. And of course, that's not going to end as well. Um, we're going to talk about this a little bit later. There's some really cool stuff. They're going to be hopefully improving the performance of the trading post now. They're going to be adding a PvE map queue. So you can actually queue into maps instead of having to spam join all the time. There's some really fun stuff coming very, very soon, actually. And that's not all of it. Like, this is a big... This is a big roadmap. There's a lot of stuff to go over here, actually, and a lot to dig into. A lot of implication as well. It's very interesting. We'll be getting to that very shortly. I keep spoiling it. Um, what it means for you. Our future expansions for Guild Wars 2 will be the backbone of this new approach. Rather than launching an expansion every two to four years with a season of Living World in between, we'll be releasing smaller expansions more frequently at a reduced price and adding additional content for those expansions through quarterly updates, meaning that the next big release is only ever a few months away. The first release in an expansion cycle is the launch point for a new story arc, bringing it with two new open world maps, two strike missions, new gameplay and combat features, new masteries, and new rewards. In the following quarterly updates, we'll add another open world map, additional story chapters, challenge modes for the strike missions, a new fractal and challenge mode, new rewards, in addition to the systems introduced in that expansion. Once that expansion story is complete, the next expansion will be just around the corner. There is a lot going on here, by the way. Uh, the huge takeaway, and this should be very exciting, is the actual kind of implied cadence here. So an expansion is going to drop with two open world maps, and Living World is essentially being replaced. Like, make no mistake. This means that Living World is essentially, that's a thing of the past. We're actually kind of reworking it. This looks a lot more like a traditional MMO setup, like for example in World of Warcraft, you might have patch 10.0, 10.1, 10.2, 10.3, and then after 10.3, you're basically going into the next expansion at that point. Much more conventional um, in this regard, and actually very exciting indeed, because just kind of think about that. So expansion, quarterly updates, that's potentially four, right? Let's think about that for like a full year, right? And then what's next? Well, that actually sounds a lot like they're actually saying that we could be looking at an expansion potentially every year, like a year to a year and a half. That actually sounds like that. The way this is written implies that, in my opinion. That's very exciting. That's a lot of content. And the, the reason it, it's like, oh, it's three to four quarterly updates, not more than that. Well, it's, it's going to be one map, right? They aren't going to stretch out a map right, over like six or eight quarterly updates. That doesn't make any sense, right? It's going to be probably a map a bit more like Ice Brood Saga that might expand out, which, you know, or Dry Top and Silver, and so on that kind of expands as the story progresses potentially with a bunch of new content and, you know, new things being added to it as, as time goes on, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then you're going to go into expansion. Like, this is... This is going to be way quicker than we're actually expecting. Bear in mind, we waited a long time for Path of Fire and, of course, a pretty long time for Ender Dragons as well, right? 
Uh, so this is going to be a lot quicker. And if you actually add up that content, if we then take that assumption that we're kind of looking at a year to a year and a half for expansions, then we're looking at three maps uh, potentially every year two strike missions every year, a fractal every year, new combat features every year. We'll get to that in a little bit. And of course, all the usual stuff, probably like new legendaries, right? New skins, new rewards, or whatever, new story. Um, very interesting stuff. And on the story front here, I, I, I'm kind of excited to see where they go here. You know, I'm not really a super story oriented player, but I think if you're a story oriented player, you should actually be pretty excited about this. Because this seems to me, this has been one of my gripes with the story, is that... The, it's like a massive arc, right? Like, it's a 10-year story. It's like, okay, can we, are we done with the dragons yet? It looks like we're going to be seeing a lot more self-contained uh, stories here, which actually is very exciting to me, I think. That's really cool. Um, and also, maybe a little bit smaller scale, a little bit more, uh, not exactly political, but you know what I mean, right? It's going to be about different factions interacting with each other, right? Rather than, like, some kind of world-ending threat. I think there's going to be a lot of very, uh, quote-unquote, human conflict. Not specifically to human, but, you know, like, actual uh, different characters and faction leaders interacting with each other, and the conflicts and uh, stories that arise from there, rather than having, like, some kind of, oh, we're going to fight a giant mountain, right? which I think is a little bit less compelling than the kind of like more down-to-earth grounded stories. So I think that's really cool uh, on the story front there as well. Uh, strike missions, of course, with challenge was getting rolled out. Really cool. Um, I was definitely hoping for more like three strike missions, and you'll notice that strike mission is not being mentioned when it comes to the quarterly updates. So it looks like strike missions are actually going to be an expansion feature, right? Rather than... Um, uh, rather than... Uh, you know, like something that will get dropped periodically, right? The challenge modes will be in the quarterly updates, but there won't be any additional strikes. I have to say, I'm a little bit sad about that. I was definitely thinking maybe three, maybe even four if I'm on like mega copium, uh, that many strike missions. And the fact that there's only two, it, it does make me a little bit, um, I guess, uh, somewhat mournful about the difficulty here. I think they're going to really struggle to actually fit in a really hard challenge mode here. Uh, because if your expansion is dropping with two bosses, two, you know, squad bosses, it's going to be, in my opinion, a little bit difficult to justify saying, oh yeah, one of them is Harvest Temple challenge mode difficulty. I could see them maybe doing like one every two expansions, but I think that's actually really hard to fit in even then, right? Because you don't want to have like half of your expansion content be like brutal. I know it's the challenge mode, there are normal modes, but I do have to kind of see this from Anet's POV, right? That, you know, Harvest Temple Challenge, I think, was a really good thing for the publicity of the game. It got a lot of other gamers interested in it. But ultimately, I think, you know, like, Anet have got to target things that players who are going to engage with it. So, I don't know, hopefully we see some really challenging stuff, some really fun worlds first stuff. Uh, but it might be a little bit difficult for them to fit in there. Yeah, I, I mentioned this earlier, actually, in, like, a pre-read here. I could see them maybe adding, like, a mega, mega... Uh, ultra mode, like a third difficulty. That's a bit copium, but maybe they could add a nightmare mode, right, for potentially uh, one of the strike missions. I don't know. Uh, we'll have to see how that one actually ends up turning out. Uh, I'm real. what, you're speaking of kind of challenge mode content? I think this is actually really nice, the fractal stuff. They're essentially kind of implying here that we're looking at a fractal per expansion. And yes, that obviously, it, I'm sure everyone would like more. Everyone would love to have more dungeon content, but I do think that, you know, Guild Wars 2, it's really picking itself back up. I really want to point out that all of this stuff is a big improvement. Yeah, guys, 880 days since the last Fractal. So getting a Fractal a year? Hey, doesn't sound so bad now, does it, right? Yeah, this is a big step up. And I would say that ArenaNet, they are going to build this. I could certainly imagine that eventually maybe we do see a strike mission getting thrown in there. Maybe we actually do end up seeing potentially more Fractals every year as they continue to iterate on their development process and can continue to grow as a company. I mean, bear in mind, Arena actually is hiring right now. That's worth noting, actually. There's um, some job positions that are available right now. Uh, the game's doing really, really well financially. So, yeah, this is it, guys. This is the journey um, to redemption. This is the journey of recovery for Guild Wars 2, which I think is, you know, really, really exciting. Um, the, in, in a lot of ways, this is exactly what I was hoping we'd hear. Like, proper, consistent commitment to getting stuff done. Repeatable expansions, constant new content, at a rate that, to be frank, we aren't uh, really used to. And, of course, just having uh, a, a vision of the future. Like, we know what's going to be happening. Look, this is the plan. This is the plan. I've all, you know, 
I don't know, maybe I'm alone on this, but I've always wanted Anet to say this. This is the plan. We know what they want to do. They know We know they want to push this expansion model here, uh, move away from Living World a little bit and rework it into this, commit to these strike missions, get these fractals done, right? Continuously improve quality of life. Uh, you know, with the World Sword Alliances are going to be coming probably later this year. World Sword reward changes, improving performance, right? With DX11, trading posts, all this kind of good stuff, right? Very, very cool indeed, actually. Um, this is, in my opinion, exactly the type of messaging that Arena needs to be giving off right now. It's giving that stability and certainty that I think the community has been craving. As we're not even done with this power goal. There's, there's still more to unpack here. One thing that I actually do want to point out here um, is that the expansion cycle being a lot quicker allows Anet to sell their game more. And I know that might be a bit of a, you know, a bit of a taboo topic, but this is actually important. Anet is a business. Like, they don't have a sub fee. If you log in, you get the living world for free. Literally, log in for one second, you get living world for free, right? That's literally how it is. This means that they can say every year, year and a half, whatever it's going to be. I, I'm kind of, honestly, I'm even leaning towards a year here, actually, by the way this is worded. It, it, it very much almost implies that we're looking for like an almost yearly seasonal cycle, which would be amazing. Um, but they can now sell the game more, which is going to help them actually sustain this model, right? Because that's also going to be a big problem. If you give all your content away for free, that's a little bit scuffed. Don't have a sub fee. You're giving it away for free. Your box price is low, by the way. Bear in mind, guys, expansions are in this game are actually pretty cheap compared to other MMOs. So you've got everything is super low, and you're getting carried by the gem store. Mount skins will take you a long way, but it's important to actually sell your game, in my opinion, flat out, right? And what's very interesting about this um, is that, again, Living World is being retired here. You won't need to log in to get the stories. It's going to be you buy the expansion. This is confirmed in chat, by the way, um, by Grouch himself. So this is actually confirmed. Um, you just log, you just buy the expansion, and then you'll get those updates automatically, right? So everything is now attached to an expansion, right? Rather than being like a separate entity. Like Living World and expansions have been like merged together basically into one concept. Now you just buy the expansion and you get all of it, which I actually do think is a good thing. I'm always going to be in favor, right? Um, I'm always going to be um, in favor of companies selling you a product for money, right? Everyone knows I'm not a huge fan of MTX, but I absolutely respect it when a company says, here's a thing, buy, right? Here we go. We love to see that. That's what I like. Uh, and this is actually a very good point by the man himself, Grouch, in the chat. This is a very good point. Um, this is also a big deal publicity-wise as well, actually, um, because expansions are big. Everyone gets excited with expansions. We saw that with Ender Dragons, right? Even though Guild Wars 2, I, well, you know, a lot of people were kind of doomsaying, right? Before EOD released, people were like, oh yeah, it's over. Guild Wars 2, what's that game? That's a dead game, right? The expansion really brought people into play. That really got people excited up again. And that's just the way it is. Expansions are exciting. People get hyped up about expansions. Uh, that's just a fact, right? The media response to that, people from other games come back to it. It's like a big marker in the sand that says, hey, come back to the game, come try it out again. Which which of course is exactly what Guild Wars 2 wants you to do with the with the lack of sub fee model. They want you to say, hey, play the content, piss off, and then come back in when there's some more stuff to do uh, and some more stuff to actually enjoy in the game. I think that's a really good point to actually bring up there, 100%. Living World definitely is a really cool idea, but it's certainly not as hype from outside of the game, right? Or even within the game. I don't, I don't think they'll get as hyped up for a Living World episode, even though it is good content. It has been historically pretty good content and has loads of stuff packaged with that. Expansions are simply far superior from a marketing perspective as well, uh, which is obviously very significant. At the end of the day, you've, you know, you can't sell your game if people don't know it exists, right? And that certainly has been one of the problems that Arena have suffered with is that people kind of forget about Guild Wars 2 because all these other MMOs have these big flashy expansions dropping everything in one go so it's certainly uh certainly something to think about there as well so i definitely approve of this from a strategic standpoint um for arena net and i also do like the look of this uh in terms of the content as well right i just want to really underline here that if anet pull this off and i really really hope they do this is going to be more content than we have been expecting across more game modes right um and more expansions now I have got to talk about this. We're getting new masteries and we're getting new rewards, but combat features. Okay, this might be one of the things that people were perhaps a little bit worried about. And in my opinion, this wording, it doesn't say it, but I, yeah, 
let's let's just cut to the chase. There aren't going to be elite specs. Uh, I'm actually very sad about that. I was already doubtful because we have so many and it kind of bloats the game. It's confusing. It's a bloody nightmare to balance, right? And absolute insanity, right? It's, it's madness, right? But in my opinion, if there were going to be elite specs, they would they would not have said combat features, right? They would have said elite specs. So let's be honest. They would have they would have said this. Now, I personally do think that actually is a good decision. I'm obviously a little bit sad that we're not going to have some kind of crazy new class um, out there. However... I do think there are a lot of things that they can do here. They can be adding new weapons. They can be adding new core trait lines uh, to the game. They can be adding new utility skills, for example. There's a lot of ways they could actually do this in a way um, without adding elite specializations. Uh, that could really radically change it. Hell, they could be looking at gear, right? Yeah, they could be looking at runes, right? You know, someone just brought that up in the chat. Yeah, they could look at runes. They could look at sigils, right? And make gearing more interesting. Uh, or make stats different. Like, revamp how stats work to give you more options in that regard. There's a whole bunch of ways they could go here um, that I think could be really interesting. Uh, and I know it definitely, you know, people are going to be a little bit sad about this. And I actually get that. You know, I, I share in your slight sadness, but I'm not going to lie. This is kind of for the, the good of the game, right? Um, I don't think adding more elite specializations is a particularly good idea. You could maybe squeeze in one more set, okay? Like, maybe. Maybe, okay? <laughs> maybe. But that's even pushing it. I think there's a lot to be done here with enabling new play styles, uh, making all the, you know, making more weapon options good, making loads of different builds, like new roles and new uh, play styles available for the existing stuff. Because right now, there's plenty of mess for CMC to clean up, right? Like, you know, let's not forget about that. There's a lot of stuff that can be done here to improve this. So that's also worth noting there with elite specializations, but everything else seems to be standard. So rewards, they don't specifically say legendaries, but I really imagine there will be legendaries uh, for sure. Uh, down the line. I'd be really surprised if there were in addition to all the usual other rewards, all that kind of stuff. New masteries. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm honestly super curious where they're going with masteries here because uh, I don't know what they can do, right? I'm thinking player housing, right? That's all I can really think, right? Is like some kind of player housing stuff. Um, Because everything else is kind of done, right? You know, I mean, they could look at guild halls, I guess, and maybe somehow integrate guild halls with the mastery system, maybe? Um, there's like a few, there's a few options here, but yeah, the, the, the thing that really springs to mind is player housing, um, or, or some kind of system like that, that allows the user to have this very custom environment they can build, right? Like, so yeah, D look at, Doe's actually teasing us. He already knows. He's unbelievable. Um, yeah, <laughs> well, honestly, that, to be clear, I'm not sure if Anet know, right? This is all, you know, fairly far out, right? Like, I imagine it's, you know, they're, they're on a right, they're on a whiteboard, right? You know, <laughs> talking about stuff here. But yeah, there we go. There we go. And yeah, I think that um, the game will definitely shift a lot more. Because again, we've already seen ArenaNet really commit to the balancing. We have CMC really grinding away, changing things pretty frequently. Uh, in this very roadmap, we actually see this confirmed. There's another, there's a balance match, of course, on the 14th. And there's going to be a balance match on May 2nd as well. So we're going boom, 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 boom. Every quarter, basically. Getting in another balance patch, getting that in real quick. So we're going to be seeing consistent updates. And yeah. Uh, to be clear, we actually just got another confirmation in the Twitch chat here as well. Um, we can, uh, one benefit of moving away from the two to four year x -Pack living world cycle means that we can keep a team working on skills and balance full time, even when developing our expansions. So again, to be clear, guys, that means that even when Anet go into their next phase of development, we are going to be seeing consistent balance updates that are going to be pushing the game in the right direction and making sure that things don't get out of control and stay in the game for too long. For example, they're not going to leave Catalyst around in PvP for too long as they will be able to be somewhat responsive with how they actually go about approaching this. Which I think is pretty exciting, guys. Very, very exciting stuff indeed. Did I, did I get through all of this? I think I did basically crunch through all of this stuff. I guess a little bit of a, to kind of wrap up here, I think it's really important to take a look at this. The next big release is only ever a few months away. And again, once the expansion story is done, so once you've got your quarterly updates, you're going into another expansion. Almost immediately, right? And again, every three months. So I think their goal here is going to be X-Pack, quarterly release number one, Quarterly release number two, quarterly release number four, three months, X pack. That's what it sounds like. So, in other words, that would be, that would math out to be a, approximately a year cycle. Maybe it will be four quarterly updates sometimes, because I imagine 
like, you know, it can't be like a done deal they're doing like every year. And again, of course, we'll get more communication on this later. I'm sure ArenaNet will uh, kind of elaborate on these plans a little bit when they have things a little bit more set in stone when it comes down to the next expansion, right? Like, then we'll have a good feel for like what this cadence is going to be. And of course, we'll see for ourselves relatively soon. Um, and there is one thing that is, I, I, you know, look, I might be going too far here, guys. So maybe you can call me out if I'm going too far. Um, let's talk about this. The next patch is 28th, guys. The next, uh, you know, quarterly update, or what, you know, basically what we can expect from a quarterly update, the next story update, February 28th. Yeah. Look at that. Familiar allies like Detective Rama and his hat. Oh, good to see the hat's back. He'll travel to a new location in Cantha and come face to face with a deadly foe that resides deep within the Jade Sea. That storyline will conclude a few months later. Hang on. Let's... Yeah, and this is where I'm saying I'm going too far, guys. February 28th. The story concludes a few months later. Okay? So let's imagine a few. That's three to four. Three to four, that's what that number means. Okay? So that means May, potentially. May or June. It's over. Okay? And lays the groundwork for future to-be-announced adventures. Gamers. You know what that means, right? Let's join these two things together. I, I, I don't want to go too far. Maybe this is copium. But this means that an expansion could be this year. Yeah. That's, they, they, this is kind of saying, this is kind of suggesting this. The next expansion could be this year. Yeah. If we combine these two ideas. So then if we, let's say, add another three months, right? Let's go ahead and add another three months to June. Like, why is that everyone's laughing at me? Stop laughing at me, chat. Stop bullying me. So June, July, August. Could be looking at September. Could be looking at October. Uh, as well. I would expect it to be a little bit slower. To be honest, we're only getting, it looks like maybe two updates here instead of maybe the normal three. So I could certainly see this being towards the end of the year and maybe a bit longer than a three month gap, right? Between the conclusion and the expansion. But that is to be expected. You guys know this. I'll give you a brief summary, but you know this. Aina have been rushing off their feet. They've done season one. They had to get the expansion rushed out, right? All this kind of stuff. They've had a very rough development cycle. They've been absolutely going all in, trying to get all these new plans. They've had to completely restructure what they're doing here. It's not a surprise to me that 2023 is probably not going to be quite what they want it to be in terms of content. You know, what, you know, they, I imagine they'd like to get that third update and they'd like to have the expansion like really close together. But again, it's been a bit of a rough time. So it's not a surprise that there might be a little bit of a longer gap than they'd like um, between that. But very, very exciting there. Um, very, very exciting indeed. That... I, and I think that's not even that much of a leap. Uh, I think we actually could be very realistically be seeing an expansion towards the end of the year. The first, the first one of its kind, right? This new expansion concept that Arena had brought to the table, which I think that's actually really cool. I cannot wait to hear more about that. Of course, we'll certainly hear more about that in the immediate future, probably over the next couple of months. Well, probably at the end of the story, right? Then they'll probably have a few more, more concrete plans to talk about what that expansion is going to be, what it's going to look like. Because... One thing, guys, they haven't really talked about features here that much, right? Like, they're, they're being, you know, they're saying masteries, right? We don't know what that means. It could be anything, right? It could be a very major feature. There could be a lot of new things they're bringing to the game. And, of course, they're still going to be pumping all that quality of life at the same time and adding um, improvements to current existing systems, right? Pretty cool stuff. Uh, you're trapped in a new location, uh, faced with the deadly foe that resides deep within the JC. That storyline will conclude a few months later with an update that introduces additional playable space. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, and this basically confirms exactly what I thought previously. It is going to be this kind of Ice Brood Saga-style expansion of the map, right? Drizzlewood Coast-style Bureau Marches, uh, which I think is actually cool. It does give you this sense of continuity. I always felt that sometimes the living world could be a bit disjointed because the maps weren't connected together, right? I think sometimes it is really cool to vary it up. Kind of the risk here is that maybe you end up in a somewhat contained biome that doesn't have as much variation. But I actually do really like the idea of a very continuous storyline that gets told, right, within the same environment with the same characters and so on, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, adds new meta, adds meta events and boss encounters. Ooh, well, I'm always, and look, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, oh man, 
Look at this concept art here. So this is kind of like under the Jade Sea here. Now, these look like boss platforms. And you know me, I'm a sucker for a good world boss. Uh, so who knows? That could maybe a, what, be a little bit of a cheeky world boss environment here, potentially, with three different platforms to face it on, maybe? That could be kind of cool. Really nice looking piece of concept art here as well, of course. Very, very fun indeed. Very fun indeed. And of course, lays the groundwork for future to-be-announced adventures. Unlike a Living World release, all owners of Guild Wars who enter Dragons will gain access to this content. There's no pressure to log in and unlock it, and no gem cost for missed story chapters unlocked. So again, this is just, again, reiterating that this is basically the first of its kind, right? This is this quarterly update style of content, and it's attached to End of Dragons. This is End of Dragons content. It's an extension of that. So you don't need to log in, and you don't buy it, right? It, you bought End of Dragons, this is what you're getting. You are getting the story attached to that. Or this is with that. Which is, again, I do tend to approve of models like this, right? Uh, and I think this will actually allow ArenaNet to uh, better monetize the game, right? Um, in a healthy way that allows them to uh, expand, right? And therefore hire more people, basically, and make more video game. Which I think is exactly what we want, right? Very, very good stuff. In the first half of the year, we'll release the Su-1 Legendary uh, Weapon Skin Variant Collection. Ooh, there you go. Two profession balance updates, a new Fractal Dungeon and Challenge Mode, and multiple updates for World Buster's World. So yeah, Fractal this year. Um, I have got to say, I, I'll, I'll, get the, I'll get the Doom out of the way first. I'm a little sad there's not going to be a Strike Mission. Um, because I'm, you know, I'm personally, I'm really into that, that kind of 10-player squad content with the, you know, really engaging, challenging stuff. However, I will say this. I do think Fractals are a better choice for ArenaNet right now. One... Five-player content is kind of the backbone of group content in MMOs. That's just a fact, right? Everyone wants dungeons. Dungeons are the backbone of MMOs. That's just how it is. Fractals are super popular. There hasn't been one for ages. Uh, the challenge modes are always amazing. Also, they always do a great job. So that's going to be really enjoyable uh, to play there. I would have loved to see them squeeze in a strike as well. But I do think a Fractal is a very smart investment choice. Fractals haven't had some, haven't had love for a while. I would love to see them uh, squeeze... Uh, squeeze this in, right? Um, uh, to get Fractal reworks and updates. That's what I'd like to see. Because Fractal, new content, that's definitely what the gamer needs right now. But I would love to see them tackle Agony Resistance. Make it account-wide, remove it entirely, and just tie it to Fractal level instead, right? Something like that. I really do think it will be great. Like, Fractals are just weird. Like, it's the only PvE that requires Ascended gear, and it's also conveniently, like, the content that is probably most appealing and most accessible to people, except for that gear requirement. I don't even know, right? I would love to see them have a bit of a rework to that, to, to kind of bring it up to standard with the rest of the game. Like, I think it's very clear that ArenaNet want content to be very accessible and not really require gear gating. I think they want you to be perfectly okay in exotics, even in pretty challenging content, like raids and strike missions, even raid, uh, challenge mode stuff. Um, so I really like to see them uh, change AR, because honestly, it's a bit of an outdated mechanic that doesn't really fit in with the game. Maybe they can fit that in. Who knows and that is a good point nike right they haven't actually told about they haven't um they haven't actually told us everything that's going to be happening in the year this roadmap only goes up to may the 2nd so maybe there could be a strike mission um squeezed in there somewhere it's definitely possible they even kind of say in the background we'll be quietly working on what's to come in the second half of the year we'll have more to share on that later so yeah maybe maybe i actually did jump to conclusions a little bit um in reading uh in reading all of this i do feel like they maybe would have mentioned it if there was going to be a strike mission coming maybe they don't know yet they might be trying to think about it and considering what they have the ability to do while working on that expansion there as well uh but you know We'll see. We'll definitely see. I think that's a good call there by Nike in the chat. See, this is why it's good to do this while streaming. I've got people calling me on calling me on my bullshit, you know? It's good. Um, uh, and multiple updates for World versus World. They don't explicitly mention alliances here, but let's be honest. Uh, they're talking about alliances. I, I do think that it's extremely likely that we see alliances... Um, get released and honestly about bloody time right because seriously i'm not talking about ain't it being slow i'm just talking i don't want to hear people like saying alliances are dead or they're never going to get released just release it i don't have to hear that anymore seriously ain't it please free me from this get me out of this hell where people constantly say that alliances will never happen uh but yeah we know there are going to be some beta tests uh, we know there's going to be more quality of life. This one's, by the way, really fun. Uh, we have World versus World Objective Reward Scaling. So in other words, this is going to be tomorrow, February 14th. That is going to be the thing. We are actually having that right now. How crazy is that, right? And we're also getting trading post improvements uh, tomorrow. Out of nowhere, by the way, guys. Crazy. Absolutely insane. Really, really cool stuff. Uh, but yeah, 
This is going to be the active participation stuff that they've been talking about for a while, I think, by the sounds of that. Um, so, uh, I can't wait to see what that is. Apparently, we're getting news on that later today. Oh, man. We've got some serious reacting to do, huh? I love to see it. You really, really do. And the Chrome Embedded Framework Upgrade, what is this? Basically, the Trading Post is a web browser, guys. And it's a bit crap, right? They use this thing called uh, Coherent. Uh, basically, which is their interface there. It doesn't perform very well. It's a bit outdated. It's a bit scuffed. They're upgrading it to Chromium, apparently, tomorrow, which actually, I mean, in theory, should be pretty good. Uh, this means that that should make the trading post, which is definitely a bit of a pain right now, perform better, which is always a good thing, right? Uh, because at the end of the day, the trading post is one of the most important features in the game, and the fact that it can be a little bit annoying to engage with it sometimes is bad, especially for new players. New players always have a bit of difficulty in earning gold, and the reason for that is because they don't engage with the trading post. So removing any barrier that might cause a player to not want to engage with the trading post is going to be a massive quality of life improvement um, for all of these players, right? Um, that's going to be a really big deal. And I think for any veteran who sells a lot, just plays a lot and sells a bunch of stuff, you are going to like this. You will enjoy it. Uh, and again, we also have the confirmation of the date here. We have the Su-1 Legendary Variant story map coming on 28th. That's a lot earlier than I was expecting. I was kind of expecting, you know, March. Um, well, I guess it's not a lot earlier. It's a bit early. I was expecting kind of March type of release kind of thing there as well. Uh, but that's where the Super Adventure Festival is going to be. Pretty interesting stuff there as well. Su-1 Variants. These, of course, actually did get data mined. So people kind of knew these were coming to an extent. Uh, but, you know, it's cool to see them there. Uh, another legendary weapon variant. That means I'm going to be able to sell my jade. Oh, I've got to log into the game right now, actually. We've got to sell our jade runestones, guys, and our amalgamated gemstones. The price is going on up. World 3. I mean, it's a little bit copium. I think they said they wanted to do it a while back. I'm not sure if they got the time to do it now, right, uh, for SAB. But I think they do want to. Maybe not this year, though. I can see them doing it next year when they've kind of stabilized after their first... Uh, you know, when they're kind of really getting into their rhythm and their new development cycle. Um, you know, well through a little copium now, but it's it's not impossible, right? Because like, I know they were, they actually mentioned it last time, right? That they were kind of thinking about it and poking about it. Uh, so maybe, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe. But I mean, that's a little, uh, I'm not sure about that one. Uh, not sure about that one. Uh, and also, we have... A, some quality of light updates in the work, including a long requested feature that will allow you to queue up for PvE maps when they're full. Oh, let's go! And a few surprises in store for you as well. This is what I'm talking about. I'm definitely a big fan of this, actually. Um, I think one of the most frustrating things that exists right now is trying to get into a map and having no idea if you're actually going to get in or not by, like, spamming join. Seeing... Well, presumably it's going to be a bit like World vs. World. You're going to see a number and it's going to say, Mate, there's 50 people in queue, lad. You're not getting in. Have fun. Right? <laughs> And I think this is good. This is really going to incentivize people when they see that giant queue say, oh, I've got to just make my own map. We've just got to get down to it. We've got to make it happen. And I think that's going to encourage not only positive player behavior, uh, but I also think it's going to make the system convenient. If there's like a seven queue, then you can just get in queue, maybe play on a different map or, you know, uh, while you wait and to see if you can make that one happen, then hop on over if you do manage to get into the other one. But definitely a really big quality of life. The map system's lack of transparency is definitely a problem, right? Um, it is definitely a problem. For sure. Um, but yeah. I like this. I am an enjoyer of the map queue system. The way I really hope this works, actually, is they list all of the maps that currently exist, not just the ones in the looking for group. Uh, in some way. I guess they'd have to significantly rework the UI. I imagine this is like an LFG feature, maybe. We don't know exactly how it's going to work, but I would love it if there was a way to see all active maps. So in other words, if there's no tag up on one map, you could join an empty map and start your tag up. That would be huge, I think. Or being able to... Because because right now what happens is, is there might be a dead map, but there's no one on it and there's no one tagged. So you can't get in, right? Or you might just... You won't be able to get in because you're stuck on, you know, the wrong one, for example. Um, or there might be a map that's got, like, a sum players on it, but, you know, there's not enough to complete the event yet, and you aren't able to see it. So I'd love it if they really improve the transparency there. That might be a little bit tricky, um, in that regard, but yeah. Uh, and yeah, the final thing they list off here is the Profession Balance Update as well on May 2nd. Always fun stuff. I really do hope they focus on design, um, here as well, and redesigning some of, I think, the problematic design in PvE in particular. And, well, maybe the other game mode too, maybe like PvP. But I think that I'd really like to see them tackle that. They've been playing around with a lot of numbers, and they did make some, um, some kind of, uh, more significant functional changes, to, in particular to Elementalist staff, I guess, uh, with the 14th patch. But I really want to see them go hard. I, I actually do believe that should be 
their focus is addressing design. Balance is really important and numbers are really important, but I think they need to attack design. They've got to get into that. They really, really do. They really, really do. And there's all, of course, there's going to be more than this, right? This is just like a, a high level overview of just the upcoming maps. And bear in mind, guys, this is just through the May, right? There's going to be another roadmap. Uh, well, I presume, right, probably after May 2nd, that will then go over the, the next stuff, right? That will be the next release uh, for the story. That will be potentially more World versus World, more versus world, world, versus world stuff, alliances, uh, quality of life as well. So there's, it's going to be a busy, it's going to be a busy one. You know, I do think this is going to be somewhat of a quiet year. And actually, that's going to put this in perspective. Realistically, guys, this is actually going to be a somewhat quiet year for Guild Wars 2 compared to what they have in store, uh, if Anet deliver on this. Because bear in mind, they're still warming up, right? They're still warming up here. We're going to be getting, um, relatively speaking, less content this year because we don't have that initial uh, bump with the expansion beginning the cycle. We're basically only getting the map updates, right? Like, we're not getting the expansion. We're getting the expansion next. But right now, we're actually getting relatively a low amount, and it's still going to be a busy year. And are kind of winding up for their full force, in fact, uh, as we kind of get into that next cycle. And again, as we kind of uh, maybe had a little bit of a guesstimate earlier, we could be seeing an expansion this year. That's actually possible. That's kind of on the cards. We could be looking at a 2023, very late, mind, like end of 2023 expansion, judging by the timings that they've kind of given away here and some of the little hints and uh, little hints and ideas that have been spread here. Even a surreptitious hmm in the chat uh, from the big man himself there as well. Very interesting to think about that for sure. Oh yeah, oh yeah. But yeah. Wrap it up. We're so excited about the next phase of Guild Wars 2. Both the things we're able to share today and what's just over the horizon. Uh, the changes we've outlined will allow us to provide a better experience to our fans, release new content updates more consistently, and ensure that Guild Wars 2 will be around for many, many years to come. The game isn't dead. Feels good, man. I, I like to see that. We love it. Incredible. We'll see you in the game. And that is from Josh Grouch Davis. The game director. There it is. We love to see it. Indeed. I mean, what an update. I feel like I can't even give a summary of that because I have to say I'm very impressed. If I was going to give a summary, I am very impressed. Uh, I definitely understand that, obviously, a lot of people are going to want more, right? But I really think we've got to understand the state of play. We've got to understand where we are in the game's history and recognize this is a big step up. And I think the vision and the direction that the game is being taken here, I think is overwhelmingly positive. We're going to be getting more content, more consistent support of multiple game modes, uh, quality of life, balance being taken care of as well, uh, and loads of little mini surprises and extra stuff along the way. I actually think this is very impressive uh, here. And yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to, I don't want to do too much of a disclaimer here, but I really think that if Arena are able to pull this off, this is going to be big. Uh, this will be a very, very bright future for the game, in my opinion. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it's been said here, and I'll just, I'll just echo it, right? Guild Wars 2 will be around for many, many years to come. And to be frank, I think we could be seeing the best years of the game still ahead of us, actually. Because again, this is tackling the thing that Aina has never been able to do. They've never been able to do this. Consistent content and support multiple gamers. They've never done it before. If this plan works, if they're able to actually utilize this strategy to make that happen, then this is a bit of a game changer. Straight up, there's no other way to put it. This is a bit of a game changer. Uh, and of course, if it goes really well, we can even ramp this up, right? We could be getting those extra strike missions. We could be getting potentially more fractals down the line, more maps, more content, all that kind of stuff. This is the, this is level one, right? This is level one, guys. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Every three months, big content, big gaming, cool screenshot, that's it. But I'll tell you what, uh, I definitely want to open this up to all of you guys. If you're on YouTube right now, let me know what you think. And hey, if you're on YouTube, stay tuned, because apparently I'm going to be back. We're going to have maybe something else, actually, uh, to talk about a little bit later on, in fact. We might be talking about uh, World vs. World um, reward stuff coming up soon. So look, let's spam some YouTube videos, guys. I love this. Oh, ArenaNet powering my ad revenue. Oh, yeah. But anyway, let me know what all of you think in the comments. Be sure to get that discourse going. Check out all of the official forms, the subreddit, all that kind of stuff. Let's make this happen. Let's get some good feedback here. And, you know, spread the word of this. Because this is very exciting stuff, actually. But that's it. 
at least for the YouTube friends. Okay, thanks for watching, everyone, gamers. Hope you enjoyed it. A bit of a big one. A bit of a big breakdown here. A bit of a hefty one. We love to see that. Um, thanks for watching, gamers. Follow, subscribe. You know what to do. Like, go on the social media, right? You're already on social media. You might as well waste a little bit more time and watch some more videos, like some more videos, and write some more comments. Right, that's it. I'm out of here, gamers. I'll see you next time. <laughs>